The myocardium is composed of two major types of cardiac cells that perform two different functions. The first type of cardiac cells are known as the working myocytes, which are responsible for forcefully contracting in order to pump the blood. The second type of cells are known as the nodal cells, which have the unique feature of automaticity. Now, what is automaticity? Automaticity, which is also known as chronotropism, is the intrinsic ability of the cell, of the nodal cells, to depolarize on their own and generate action potentials independent of the nervous system. It is absolutely important to know that these cells, the working myocytes and the nodal cells, are extremely interconnected. So when the nodal cells depolarize, instantaneously the working myocytes contract. In this video, we're going to cover how these two cells interact and how the different action potentials are generated in each cell. So the reason why the normal resting heart rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute is because the SA node cells depolarize and send the action potentials at a frequency of 60 to 100 times per minute, causing the working myocytes to contract. This is what sets the pace of the heart or what is known as the sinus rhythm. It is important to note that this rhythm is modified via the nervous system. The sympathetic speeds it up and the parasympathetic slows it down. So how do the SA node cells achieve this rhythmicity and allow the heart to beat involuntarily? If you remember, a neuron has a resting membrane potential of minus 90 millivolts. This resting membrane potential remains constant up until a stimulus arrives. What is interesting is that nodal cells do not have a stable resting potential. This is because at negative potentials, at extremely negative potentials, what is known as the funny sodium channels or the HCN, open spontaneously on their own without an external input from the nervous system. This allows for the slow entry of sodium ions as soon as this transient resting potential is reached. So, in other words, this resting potential does not have time to remain constant because as soon as the value of minus 60 millivolts is reached, the funny channels open and the membrane potential increases towards the threshold potential. As soon as the threshold potential of minus 40 millivolts is reached, the funny sodium channels close and what is known as L-type calcium channels open, allowing for a large amount of calcium to flow in. This causes an upstroke in the action potential to reach to slightly above 0 millivolts. We need to understand that these channels are time dependent. They open for a certain amount of time before closing again. After about 150 milliseconds, the L-type calcium channels close. Meanwhile, the potassium channels start to open. Less calcium enters into the cell and potassium starts leaving the cell. So, repolarization starts and the membrane potential becomes more and more negative. As soon as minus 60 millivolts is reached, the funny sodium channels open and the whole cycle starts again. So, to summarize, we have three phases of the SA node's action potential. Phase 4, which is the pacemaking phase, setting up the pace of the heart. The main current that contributes to this phase is the funny current that passes through the funny channels or the HCN channels. Now, it is important to note that these channels are non-specific, allowing both sodium and potassium to pass inwards. Another minor current that contributes to this phase is the calcium current that passes through the L-type calcium channels that are just beginning to open. The second phase is phase zero, or the slow upstroke phase, which occurs when the threshold potential is reached. The L-type calcium channels open, allowing for the influx of calcium in large amounts. Keep in mind that only L-type calcium channels contribute to phase zero. Finally, after about 150 milliseconds, the L-type calcium channels close and the potassium channels open, allowing for the membrane potential to drop and the cell to repolarize. 
Now, how does the depolarization of the nodal cell affect the contractile cell? The cations that have entered the nodal cells will now flow through gap junctions into the contractile cell. Slowly, the membrane potential will become more positive moving towards the threshold potential. At minus 70 millivolts, fast sodium channels open and large amounts of sodium enter the cell quickly and also some L-type calcium channels open contributing to this phase. The cell depolarizes and this is known as the fast upstroke or phase zero. After a few milliseconds, the fast sodium channels will close. Remember again, these are time dependent channels. At this point, more and more of the L-type calcium channels open. Something very interesting happens next. What is known as type A potassium channels open and more potassium starts leaking out than calcium coming in, which leads to the membrane potential to slightly drop to around zero. And this is known as phase one. Now, when the membrane potential reaches zero millivolts, this becomes a very powerful stimulus for the L-type calcium channels. More and more calcium flows into the cell, but let's not forget about the type A potassium channels which are still open. Since we have positive potassium charges leaving the cell and positive calcium charges entering the cell, the membrane potential does not change and it plateaus, and it does so for a decent amount of time, for about 250 milliseconds. This is known as the plateau phase or phase two of the action potential. Following phase two, we reach the repolarization phase or phase three of the action potential. Here, the L-type calcium channels close and the potassium channels responsible for repolarization open. Finally, once we have reached the resting membrane potential or phase four of the action potential, what is known as the inward rectifying potassium channel takes over. A major difference to be noted between the inward rectifying potassium channels and the type A potassium channels is that the inward rectifying channels allow potassium to enter into the cell at negative potentials, whereas the type A channels conduct potassium out of the cell at positive potentials. I have comprised a table that summarizes all the different phases, the special names of the currents and the channels. Thank you for watching. If you found the video helpful, please subscribe and share it with other medical students and don't forget to like the video.